our brains still go. We still need to be working on something, right? Like whether it's, you know, work or not work or pay or not pay. Hi there, I'm Mindy Jensen. And I'm Carl Jensen. And this is the Mindy and Carl on Money Podcast, where we talk about life after financial independence. Why do we call this show Mindy on Money? Because Cashy Carl sounded too much like Trashy Carl. Wow. On this episode of the Mindy and Carl on Money Podcast, Carl and I are going to talk to the J Money from Budgets Are Sexy about life in general, wife fi, and his latest project called I Met You Today. Do I sound different? I'm talking in my radio voice today. Why are you being a weirdo? I'm trying to improve. <laughs> but before we get started, let's take a quick break. Today's episode is sponsored by books, our favorite books to be precise. That's right, Carl. Today's episode of Mindy and Carl on Money Podcast is sponsored by our favorite books, which can be found at MindyOnMoney.com slash books. That's MindyOnMoney.com slash books. You sound like such a Oh, I know. And now let's jump into our interview with Jay Money. You're not going to talk like that during the show, are you? No. Good. Welcome to the Mindy. And Carl. On Money Podcast. And we are so excited to talk to you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Always fun to chat with you guys. Okay. Let's jump in very quickly. Your backstory about how you discovered financial independence uh, when you reached financial independence and when you quit your traditional W-2 job. Okay. Yeah. I started 15 years ago. Um, I bought a house, no money down, um, no budget. Didn't know what I was doing. Bought it within 48 hours of seeing the place and realized I needed to pay attention to money. So I started Googling budgeting and stuff like that and came across blogging. I was like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. People are saying real life stuff, real life examples. I got hooked into reading and then I said, well, I'm just going to start a blog. You know, why not? Like, what else am I doing? Right. And little did I know I'd go on to change my life and my finances and my friends talking to you guys. And I, yeah, launched Budgets Are Sexy, which took off did some other projects, you know, and, and financial independence wasn't really like a thing in 2008 when I started. I think like early, what is it? Extreme Retire Early, Jacob, what was the site? Early reti early Retirement Extreme? And then Mr. Money Mustache. And then I was like, oh man, yeah, I should get in, look into it more. And then over the years started changing my brain, changing the way I thought and stuff uh, more towards that freedom path versus, oh, I just want like millions of dollars, which is what I started the blog. You know, I, I just want to be a millionaire. I, I didn't know you can't spend a million dollars, you know? Like, I just thought like, you spend lots of money, you have lots of money. So I've come a long way. Uh, my last job, man, my last W2 was probably 10 years ago. When, once the blog started taking off, I could do that you know, full time for a living. And then I think my last like technical contract was with the Motley Fool last year, two years ago that I did. So I haven't had like a quote real job technically, I guess in a couple of years. Was the Motley Fool a 40 hour a week traditional job or was it more freelancey? No, it was 40 hours a week. So they bought Budgets Are Sexy from me three or four years ago. I said, hey, we love Rockstar Finance, the curation site you had years ago. Let's recreate that for the community. We launched All Star Money. And yeah, I worked on it 40 hours a week. I was just a contractor, but work-wise, it was all the same. And then I did that for, I think, a year, a year and a half. And then they kind of, the group disbanded, shut down the site and basically sold me back the blog if I wanted it. And I'm back to blogging, but like not for money, just purely for fun. I literally, actually this week I took out all ads. Like there's no way for me to make money besides like random affiliate stuff that I have in there. So, so I bought it and then <laughs> made no money. And I have forgotten, I still owe you a blog post that you asked me to do like two years ago. And <laughs> sometimes I'm extremely late, but I don't forget. And the premise of it was investing for fun or to help friends. So I've not yes. forgotten that. Oh, I like that. I love that idea. I remember that. Yes. Well, yeah. I'm back to blogging there. So anytime. Okay. I promise I will get to it this year. Uh, <laughs> uh, is, is there any is there any situation where you would go back to a 40 hour a week grind? Yeah, actually, a guy reached out to me that like launches fintech companies. He launched Bidget a while ago, and I got involved in that. And we're going to have a call about his next venture that he might be working on. So I'm always open to ideas. 
but would it be like 40 hours like hardcore probably not i guess like unless it was something that was like super fascinating like i i'm moved now more towards what excites me than money or any or power or or growth or any of that kind of stuff and so like right now for example i do like yoga two times a day like i'm just at coffee shop like i'm just like the project of j money is basically like my project right now like that's what excites me like eating healthier working out for once in my life and so if someone came along with a cool idea yeah i would i would jump on it if i, if I was interested but with no plans i kind of just go with the flow right now do you consider yourself to be financially independent probably that's a good question i yes probably but then with the caveat that my wife still works Wi-Fi, as you guys are very familiar with and coined, I believe. And so, like, if she stopped working, we could live for a long time based on our investments. Now, would I be happy pulling from it? And, you know, would I be at coffee shops and do yoga all day long? Like, probably not. I'd probably try to be a little bit more productive than that. But yeah, we could last decades without um, needing money, I guess. You know, we, we would just have to curb some of our habits that we do. Okay. Does that answer it? Is that, is that financially independent? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, uh, well, is it financially independent? It's, it depends, I think, on the performance of the stock market. Do yeah. you have enough, like, based on the 4% rule, do you have enough for 30 years? It sounds like maybe you do. Yeah, you probably. Need- all my money, all our investments are mostly in index funds. So I don't do real estate and, and other stuff that a lot of people. So, so it's buried stock market. It sounds like if your wife quit, you would have to stretch your yoga budget. Oh. That is true. Yeah. No more yoga pants for me. Yeah. I go down. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get one of those sound effects. To put them, like, wow. do you put sound effects on your podcast or no? Is it just real? Yeah, well, he's going to put that one in this one. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Don't cut this out. Don't cut this out of the podcast. Just joking. <laughs> I don't know why I keep finding these co-hosts that have all these puns. <laughs> Just lucky. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I definitely consider myself lucky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so speaking of luck, ooh, how about that yeah. segue? Jay, you had a recent health scare that was <laughs> like you you finally got a diagnosis and you figured everything out. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Yeah, that was no fun. I just randomly one day started having like sores in my mouth and in my nose. And then they progressively got worse to the point where I couldn't swallow anymore. And, you know, as a guy, I did not want to go to the doctors and stuff. And I finally realized I, I have to. And then no one at the hospital, I've never been to a hospital where they like couldn't tell you what was wrong with you. Like I thought that was their whole thing, you know, and they brought in like all kinds of crazy experts I'd never even heard of before. And none of them do none of them and then one person said hey have you talked to like um, a dermatologist that specializes like inside like mouths and throats i didn't i didn't know that was a thing i just thought it was like a outside skin thing um and this person said oh i read this thing in a textbook it could be this they recommend me to um, johns hopkins university which um, a hospital which specializes they have a dermatology center that's so good um and she was right and so it went from like not knowing anything to knowing 100 percent what it was they got me on like transfusion stuff, kind of like cancer patients have to do. And it cleared right up, got me on, what was it, prednisone medicine, which cleared me up and made me all loopy and all kinds of other stuff. But that was it. And so now I know what it is. It's called pemphigus vulgaris, a weird blistering autoimmune disease. After the infusions, which cost like $20,000, by the way, and health insurance. So that's another reason my wife likes to work. She enjoys doing it, but she's very like, 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 conservative and, and wants to make sure we have health insurance for all the kids where I'm more, you know, ah, everything will be fine. In this case, it would not have been fine. We just would have spent a lot of money. And so I, we, yeah, it's, I, I've done four infusions so far. So it would have been 80 grand out of pocket. And then it should last one to four years. And basically when it starts flaring up, I have to just do it, you know, for the rest of my life in theory. That's 80 grand out of pocket. Your insurance did not cover the 80,000? No, it would have been had we not had insurance. Oh, okay. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, and it, it ends up being roughly around eight hundred dollars uh, an infusion. So it would have been like it was like you know twenty five hundred something like that, three thousand. Okay. Yeah, math. 
So this is really interesting. A lot of people plan for their early retirement life based on their current situation. And yep. this was a recent event, like within the last year or so that you yeah. had the last two years. Uh, but if you had planned for your early retirement and then your wife didn't work and you didn't work and you did this, hey, whatever insurance or yeah. what's figured out insurance plan, yeah, which I right. do not recommend if you really know that, <laughs> that would have had a huge negative impact on your finances. Yeah. Did this chronic illness diagnosis impact your financial outlook? Did it make you rethink your financial choices? No, it kind of made me like appreciate life more. And I think that's why all of a sudden I'm like at the gym and doing yoga. And like I have, you know, we talked about drinking green juice, like veggie juice every day. Like I'm hardcore into like just paying attention to what I consume and do now, whereas before I didn't at all. I secretly kind of hope that all this stuff will make sure that this disease never comes back. But no, I think I just got more health conscious and more like, I, I don't know, I I don't think I'm invincible, but I definitely didn't think that like I was going to be in bed, never wanting to like like get up. Like I just I never felt that low in my whole life. And you know me, I'm pretty a positive guy, and and I just didn't want to do anything. And thank God I didn't like I didn't have a job at the time. I was in between. Like I didn't own the blog. Like I, I didn't have to do anything except concentrate on myself, which is nice. I mean, it was hard on my wife with the kids and that kind of stuff. It was, it was hard. But had I had a job and, and needed, you know, money for paycheck to paycheck kind of living, I would have been screwed, you know. So I'm thankful that everything I did happened before this point, you know, so that I didn't have to worry as much. Your situation is so interesting because I can see people taking this in two different directions. The first direction where I think most people might go to is that, oh, my God, health insurance, blah, blah, blah. The financial independence isn't going to work because what happens if this or this or this happens? But you went in a different direction that perhaps you yeah. have more appreciation for it because you had the time to deal with this stuff. And yeah, because you had saved, you had the financial wherewithal where maybe this was a setback. You still have the suit of armor to deal with this nonsense and a greater appreciation for life and maybe not having a job too, which is, uh, I never thought would have thought about it that way, but I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, yeah, and also, like, I have more, I remember my first feeling, because I hear people talk about autoimmune diseases all the time, and, like, I can understand kind of before, but I didn't really fully until I went through the process, and really that process of being sick and not knowing what you have, and not knowing if it's curable, and not knowing if it's going away, like, it's just so much, I mean, it only happened within, like, a span of three months, but it felt like years, and there was no end in sight, and so now when I hear people talk about that, like I really can sympathize and I like understand more. Like I think I understand humans more than I did based on being sick and then thankfully like recovering, you know. Um, but there's people that have this disease all around the world and they're blisters and they don't have treatment or they can't get to the U.S. and and you know a lot of third world countries. I mean it is is horrible. It's a, like you don't it doesn't kill you unless like it gets really bad, but like you want to die because it's just so painful. And then it just eventually over the years, I guess eventually would kill you. But so yeah, just like thankful that like we're in the US, we you know, we we've learned about money for the last ten years to, to save and you know, it didn't wipe us out, thankfully. Yeah. Autoimmune diseases are horrible. I have a lot of people in my family with MS and it's better oh, not to have the thing. But then the cost of the drugs, I think some of them are like 10,000 a month and there's grants and other things they get insurance takes care of some of it but it is sure. the it's costs scary. are spectacular never mind having the disease in the first place which is of course worse yeah that's sad so well you mentioned that your wife works and provides health care how yeah. long does your wife plan on working I don't know. I ask her like once a month, like, <laughs> All right, do you still like it? Do you want to stop? Do you want to do something else? She likes the stability. So probably her normal like retirement age, I would imagine like 60s or maybe like in her 50s, she will. But she, she generally enjoys what she does. She likes the community. She likes her coworkers, the stability. And yeah, and I, don't, I don't know what she would do if she didn't work. I guess I try to like even hey, take a lunch break and come do yoga with me, you know, but no, she's not, she's not there yet. So. 
I ask my wife the same question on a monthly basis as well. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps adding more more jobs and projects. <laughs> Not that you don't do anything, right? Like that's the thing I think with this fire stuff. So many people think like, oh, I'm just going to make money, save it, save it. And then I'm going to stop working and just play the whole time. But like most people assume playing is just doing nothing or sitting on the couch and watching TV, right? But all of us that, that have the brains to save and to like strategize, like we're just, we're, our brains still go. We still need to be working on something, right? Like whether it's, you know, work or not work or pay or not pay. I mean, you know, what? even, even six, seven months ago, my friend Nate St. Pierre started working for a board game company. It was so cool. And he would, we'd talk every other day on board games. And then he's like, hey, like, maybe we can work on a project within the board game company. And so they hired me for like a month. So I got to work on board games because it was fun and I enjoyed it. And it did happen to pay. But like, I would have done it for free too, just because like, it's interesting, you know, but like the freedom to like work on what you want, whether it's pay or not pay or for yourself or for someone else. Like, that's like the beauty that I'm finding. Like, but, but like, I don't think any of us will ever just like sit home and do nothing. Like, it, I don't think we're wired that way. No, I think you're absolutely right. We're not going to sit around and do nothing. Or we might sit around and do nothing in the decompression stage. Like, I sure. quit my job. I am going to read 412 books <laughs> and that over the next month. And then I'm going to start my life after retirement. I can see like a brief period of just decompression. But sure. I don't yeah. know anybody who is literally doing nothing. One of my favorite quotes is, my definition of hell is a permanent vacation. I completely agree with that. It would be oh, yeah. sitting on a beach all day, even if you're in Hawaii or some beautiful place. Screw that. I want to be doing something. Kind of like what we're doing right now, I guess. We're all <laughs> sort of retired, maybe. I, I think work yeah. needs to be re redefined because it's... Uh, right, yeah. There's work when you <laughs> when you have to do it for someone, and there's all these boundaries and rules around it. But it's a hell of a lot different when you're doing it because you volunteer to do it. And there might yep. not be any financial payout, like right now when we're kind of paying to do this Mindy on Money podcast. We're not paying Thank a lot. It. No, it's a little bit, but we're still paying to do this work. Well, okay, but it's not like we're paying thousands of dollars. And, and, and this this is not a complaint at all. I enjoy this, okay, so it's good. worth it. It's worth paying to do work. <laughs> okay. So back to you and your story. This isn't about us. No, I like this. I like this this story going on over here brewing. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it around. Yeah, feel free to ask us anything at any point, <laughs> including our views on Taco Bell and White Castle. Oh, God. White Castle. Oh, my God. Do you know what White Castle is? Do you have that on the East Coast? Or? Um, no, we don't. I used to live in California. I feel like I saw them a lot back in the day there. Is that, isn't that where they are now? Okay. <laughs> The Midwest. I'm not sure if they're over on the east, the, the west coast. Maybe uh, I would avoid uh, it. It's not in line with your new healthy lifestyle. So. Yes, yes, yes. Same with Taco Bell from yeah, all the salt from what I learned a couple years ago. Yeah. No okay, tasty. So yeah. Back to you and your wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. He went back to school and then got a job. Oh and yeah. You don't have a traditional W two. How yeah. does she feel about working while you don't? And more yeah. than not that she's working, but that you're not working while she is. And yeah. how do you explain this to friends and family? Because we've had that <laughs> same interaction. Like you meet somebody, not like, okay, so yeah. we know that we live in Longmont and we have a lot of friends in this. It's kind of like a, a magnet for five people. And That's we've cool. met people whose in-laws have made snide comments about the oh, fact wow. that they don't work. Or... Uh, we have a friend whose parents were like, you quit your job. That was a good job. Can you get it back? And right. they don't have the concept. So I, I know you, I yeah. know you have a solid marriage, but how do you explain yeah. this to other people? Um, I tell people right now, cause I've, I've tried, like I've been quote, not working for like a year now. And so I've, I've told people that just in between projects, which is true. Cause sometimes I'm working on a project and sometimes I'm not. And that like an automatically, like usually does the trick. Um, but interesting. So I started volunteering um, at like a homeless shelter. And yesterday when I was there, um, this guy asked me um, if I had a job. We were talking at work and he was working. And I said, no, I don't have a job. Um, and then he looked at me and said, oh, do you want one? I can hook you up. And he was like being super helpful because a lot of people don't have jobs, right? And I was like, no, no, I don't need a job. And he's like, well, what do you mean you don't need a job? 
And I was like, and I didn't know how to say it because he obviously did not have money and job, like job and having a car. Like when he found out I had a car, he's like, oh, you are so lucky to have a car. And I was like, oh my God, like it's just a different world, right? And so I had to like figure out what to tell him, which I basically just changed the subject. So he, like, I didn't say something stupid or offend him or anything, you know, but, but the in-between projects works a lot. And then as far as my wife, yeah, like, it's funny. I think I talked to you about this stuff a few months ago. And it dawned on me that I've never actually like asked her, like, is it going okay? Or like, like, are you still fine with this? And so I did. And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, why? And I said, oh, I just, I never, I've never asked you. Like, it never dawned on me to do that. So we talk about stuff, but I think last time when I asked her, she just said, yeah, as long as you're happy. And, and I think she, I, I do take a lot on of the household now than when I was working more. And so I do grocery shopping now. I do laundry every day. Like I'm in charge of like the kids while she's working. So I do pick up, drop off, um, a lot of doctor's appointments. So I'm, I tried early to take on stuff that was off of her plate. And that way, in a way, the more I'm not working, the less she has to do with annoying stuff, I think, at least in my head, that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, so I think that's a balance. I can see that for sure. And I've, I wonder if you said you never thought to ask her before. I wonder if you're just getting context clues that she's happy because, you know, you don't have to discuss everything if everything's going fine. Like we, uh, we talked about how when we were dating, we didn't talk about money. Like we got married and had never had a money conversation, but also we didn't really need to have a money conversation because we knew we were on the same page with money. Um, Yeah, it makes sense. (laughs) He, we cool. both drove like crappier cars, and he used a coupon on the first date. <laughs> That's a true man right there. I love it. <laughs> you were meant to be in the fire space. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> You're funny. That's so I cool. That I said that. I don't feel bad at all. It, yeah, Mindy actually reminded me of that story a couple of years ago, and I had since forgotten it, and I was a bit horrified like if i was in the dating pool right now i would want to flex my frugal muscle somehow and give some kind of clues as to who i am but i don't think i would have i don't think i'd do that unless i knew going into it that they were had that you can like leave a big big tip that kind of shows like oh i'm helpful and i have money you don't i don't have to worry about maybe i've got a we have a tesla now i'd have to run like a crappy car to pick the potential yeah, date up in. So it doesn't matter. I know. I'm just hypothetically speaking, I'd have to get like a two thousand crawl from Turo or something. It would probably be cheap, like ten bucks a day. And- Turo. Oh my gosh. So I have another question along the same lines and I'm not trying to harp on this. I'm it's more coming yeah. from like American society perspective. But Farnoosh okay. Barabi had a book a few years ago called When She Makes More. And I okay. first saw this book and I was like who cares? If she makes more, who cares? If he makes more, who cares? But yeah. it turns out that a lot of people really care. And by a lot of people, I mean a lot of men. And they they yeah. have this, like, insecurity. And I don't understand that because if you're married and she makes more, good for her, right? Oh, yeah. It helps, it helps benefits you no matter what. Yeah. And the family and the household. And I had a conversation with somebody that I cannot remember. And they she said, it's not me against him. It's us against the world. So if I make more than he does, which I do, it's not me making yeah. more, even though technically it is. But like, it's it's our money because we have combined finances. So yeah. have you ever felt weird that your wife makes more than you? No, I don't even, I probably haven't even thought about it. At one point we were going back and forth because like I'll, my blog would be successful and then some months it wouldn't and she, she keeps rising. But no, I've never, I've never really thought about it. It doesn't really come up. And actually, no, and now that you say that, I don't think anyone's ever, ever asked me. Maybe they, I probably get more of the like, well, what do you do all day type thing. Yeah, but we get that even with blogging, right? Like, oh, you're a blog, like, you're a blogger. Oh, it must be nice to sit in your pajamas and just type, 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 type and not do anything. It's all, you know, I think since I've been doing that for 15 years, like everyone's like, well, he's just doing something random. Like, you know, we don't understand it and we kind of leave a wrong thing. But no, I mean, I've definitely heard people, you know, men especially getting upset and getting weirded out and even relationships ending because it's too much, you know. I think for them too, like they they feel like I. it's not like, at least from what I understand, 
it's more like the man isn't doing his job. Like he thinks he needs to be rising up higher. So the higher the, the woman goes, he thinks that like he's failing, which isn't true, but that's the kind of sense that I've gotten in the past. But no, luckily I haven't had come across that. And it doesn't, doesn't really come up in, in our household, at least. It'd be oh, interesting yeah. if, my, if my kids ever, I wonder if they would ever say anything. Um, but again, like they're just like dad's on the computer and mom works upstairs. You know, they, that's all they say right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's crazy. If this is indeed a problem, I am so happy to have this problem. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. On a deeper level, money and your pay is a bit of a reflection of your success. If you work hard and do well, you're going to be paid more. Mm -hmm. So if I had a problem with that, I'm telling my partner that I'm jealous or I'm, I don't like your success. Uh, there's so many things wrong with uh, anyone. So who many have things. Thought, unless the partners throw it in their face somehow, then it's a problem. But I don't think most people are like that. Well, you know what? That's a really interesting point. I am teasing you and saying, I do make more. And, you know, if, if I do make more and I do, but yeah, I and I do like, I do make more because I have a job and he's retired. Of course, I'm going to make more money. I'm not going to work for free, even though I said I would almost work for free. I'm not working for free. So, <laughs> of course, then I'm going to be making more. But to throw it in your face all the time, oh, well, that's my money. How dare you spend my money? I can see how that would be a problem. That's an unhealthy right. relationship. You shouldn't be in an unhealthy relationship ever anyway. But that's a different story altogether. Yeah, that's true. Story. Yeah, yeah. There was a couple in the Ramit episode where she worked and he stayed home with the kids. And I think they didn't go deep into it, but they might have had some of the issues. But he never, I, I think she, one of them thought the money might have belonged more to them since they were the one working and maybe they didn't value the child care part enough. Oh, on the mm. show? Yeah, the Ramit yeah. show. So she made, she made like $250,000 a year and he stayed oh, wow. home. And wow. But yeah, I think she didn't value his contributions. And I think that she wanted him to stay home with the kids, but also wanted him to work too. I don't know. I don't uh, remember. It's been a yeah, while since weird. I saw that. But I mean, if <laughs> I was a stay at home mom because he made so much more money at the time than I did, and I wanted to be a stay at home mom. And yeah. if I went back to work, literally all of my salary would have gone towards child care anyway it didn't yeah. really make sense for me to go back to work when i didn't want to in the first place um but i never felt like you thought it was your money it was our money even though you were the one with the job and i wasn't just like now it's our money even though i'm the one with the job and you don't have one yeah our, mm -hmm. our relationship just isn't like that we don't have my car and her car or things belonging to each other it is just ours but i will say if you wanted to make 250000 like that lady, <laughs> MPV, I, I would be okay with that. I don't want to work <laughs> that much. Or more. If you wanted to make more than that, totally cool with that. Thanks. You know, I will say this too. Um, something I do get, which my wife finds annoying, is whenever I'm doing, like if I'm doing kids pickup, and it's like me now, lots of women typically, like especially daycare stuff, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but a lot of women will come up and be like, oh, you're such a good dad. Oh, my gosh. Look at all this time you're spending. And like that never happens to a woman, at least my wife. But like people sometimes will walk like I, I remember one time I was pushing my kid down with the stroller down the street, like in the middle of the day. And some car literally stopped and pulled over. And so I see you, you know, strollering every day. And I just want to say, like, you're such a good dad. Like, thank you. Like, that's awesome. And I was like, oh, I, I love compliments, of course. But, like, I'm literally doing the same thing a woman would do if she was a stay-at-home mom, you know. So that part, like, I get unfairly more credit than I than maybe I should just because I'm a guy. Is he, can see that. Isn't it strange? So I had kind of the opposite situation. I had, and I can't remember who told me this, but it was someone I knew here in Longland told me, isn't it kind of weird going to pick your kids up from school? I'm like, no. Oh, really? And they're like, well, you're the guy, isn't it mostly, like, ladies i'm like i guess so i hadn't paid attention but he's like i think i would feel uncomfortable with that and i thought that was so strange oh but interesting in my mind, I'm, like, huh. I'm so happy that i can go to pick up my kids instead of the daycare bus coming to pick them up like how fortunate yeah. am i i guess I'm anything that's not the norm right people I guess a lot of people just keep it to themselves, but every now and then they say it out loud, right? Whether they should or not. So. Yeah. 
Uh, next week, we're going to talk to Cody Berman, who just got married last year. What advice would you have for him, someone who's newlywed? And I'm also curious, what advice would you have for someone who's a little bit further along the path, like yourself or us? Because we're old. Yeah, because we're old. I say that. <laughs> I didn't want to go there, but yeah. We're significantly older than Jay. I don't know if you know. Yeah. You could, you're 40, right? Okay. I'm 44. Cody, I think, is an awesome guy, and he's hilarious, and he just seemed... I don't, I've only hung out with him at social events, and he's always laughing and having fun and, like, having the time of his life and seems to, like, know everything and is, like, solid. So I don't think he probably needs advice specifically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I think, you know, early on, like, I, we used to do, like, money meetings, like, once a month, and we'd go over stuff, like, when we were first dating and stuff and, and engaged. But I think one thing we have done good is like one of like whatever we're interested in. So for like me, I enjoy money and numbers and my wife hates it. Like all she wants to know is like, are we good? Like, do we have to stress about it? And like, can I just not think about money? And so once we realize how our, our you know, our, how, how we feel about the stuff, we just divvied it up. So I handle most of the money stuff. And once a month, I'll say, hey, here's what our net worth's looking. Here's good stuff. Here's bad stuff. And then sometimes she like has questions you know, we go over and others not. And then there's stuff that she's good at with other stuff around the house that she does. Um, so I think finding out what you're naturally good and bad at in the beginning is really good. So hopefully in, in a perfect world, they'll match up. You know, I, I know some relationships that both want to handle all the money and make all the decisions. And that seems, you know, seems pretty tough, you know, but talk, communication, right, with everything in relationships, I feel like is key. But yeah, just going with, going with your natural talents and, and stuff you enjoy. And I think, you know, Obviously not hiding stuff that, you know, the debt and that kind of stuff. But yeah, so I guess I don't have anything super, super shocking in this department. I don't think people can hear enough that they need to communicate with their partner. Where can people find you? I'm budgetsaresexy.com for my blog, at budgetsaresexy on Twitter or X. And then I have kind of like an online resume if you want to see like old projects that I've done and other information on me. It's just jmoney.biz, the letter J, money, then dot B-I-Z. That kind of gives you like a snapshot of who, if you don't like, no idea who I am, that gives you a good, good idea. You have a new project that you, you're working on with your friend, Nate, that I just read about that's super cool. Can you tell us about that? Oh, yeah. I met you today.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like Nate, Nate had the seed for it and never really initiated. And I thought it was brilliant. Like basically whenever we meet someone in real life that kind of like blows us away or just makes our day, like we give him this card that said, I met you today.com. And on the back says like, check this out, like after 24 hours. And then we have 24 hours basically to write an article and put it on the site that, that says, Hey, like you're awesome. You're refreshing, whatever it is that, that made us happy. We just kind of give them a shout out. And so then in theory, they go to it and they see it and they get happy and they know that they made, you know, an impression on us. And so Nate's really good. He's good at giving the cards and doing it. I meet someone and then I forget to have a card with me. And then like I write it and then later I find them. Usually I find them again, but it's really good to get in the habit of a, like realizing like all the people that we meet in real life and, and that like, there is a lot of goodness out there. And then it's good just to like, you know, tell them because most of us, you know, and you guys know, you'll get an email from a, a listener or reader and like, oh, you just changed my life, at, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, wow, like I would have never known had you not said anything, you know, and I think the physical face to face stuff, you know, is really important these days. So yeah, silly project. It's our first project that isn't meant to, you know, like grow or make money. It's just like a random project. <laughs> Super cool. We also have a home tattoo kit from Amazon. It's only twenty nine ninety five. The first one's free, kid. It'll look like a lot like your five year old son's name. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, oh my gosh, that's yeah, that's too much. It'll be worse. Oh my gosh. But today I got one, and um, this is completely random. But it said if you can stay away from your phone for a whole month, like we'll give you ten thousand dollars, and they give you like a thing to lock it in and they give you a flip phone and you can apply they select 10 people and for ten thousand dollars you're not allowed to use your phone 
um, to like get more freedom and less is more like this kind of, I forget what the company was, but it's, a, they're into freedom and stuff. So, um, but I found out through a curation um, article. That's, that's why I bring it up. So it's only half random. Oh, Would you do I that? Do Would you do that for $10,000? In a heartbeat. Okay. Yeah, I would too. I don't know. What about you, Carl? I'd probably do it for like 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, they give you a flip phone so you can still call, but that's yeah. all you can do with it, right? I so I thought that was kind of cool. Okay. He's got flashing letters. He was right or he was wrong. Yeah, flashing yes. as you're talking. <laughs> that way we the audience knows. There you go. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> all right. J Money from Budgets Are Sexy. Thank you so much for your time today. We had such a good time talking to you. You too. Thank you, guys. Have fun. Yeah. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thank you.